approximately 10% of your business online, I would say you're doing very well. Uh, you, we cannot face, forget the fact that consumers still like to come to our stores. They still want to try goods, they want to feel, they want to touch. But we do have an omni-channel uh, online business where consumers click online and they can pick up things in the stores. And it's a convenience. And you know what? The online business will continue to grow. I mean, in Singapore, our online business is about 7% of our turnover. In Malaysia, it's a little less. In Indonesia, it's even more. It's about 11%, 12%. So it depends where you basically are and the products you're offering. Now, staying on that point, though, uh, we did notice in the, uh, in, in the results, actually, that there was a slight decline, actually, in online performance. This also part and parcel with the reopening Absolutely. of many, of many economies, people going back to brick and mortar stores. And I am, uh, I, I confess, I'm a bit old school. I, if I want to buy a new shirt from one of FJ Benjamin's brands or buy a new pair of shoes, I do want to go to the store, just look at it and feel it. You know, shoemakers, I could be a ten and a half in one, in, for one shoemaker, ten for the other. Is this the limitations of, ha of being able to touch and feel the merchandise? Is that going to hamstring um, how fast e-commerce will grow? Or am I one of those old school consumers that perhaps are not the consumers of the future that FJ Venture will be looking at? No, no, listen, I mean, the online business will continue to grow. Uh, you know, young people shop at night. They don't have time during the day. But you are right. The majority of people still want to come to the stores. They enjoy the experience. They want to be served. They want to be told what's new and how it looks on them. And they want to try the stuff. So it's going to remain that way for a while unless there's a whole new development of shopping. You know, you hear about the metaverse and what's happening in that area. In the next few years, there may be developments there. So, again, I say it's about being relevant to the consumer you serve, delivering them the products they need in the way and in the channel which demands it at the end of the day. And that's really our job. That's our job. <laughs> Nash, in the, in the here and now, uh, inventory overhang is, is a big, big problem for U.S. retailers. Are, right. are your brands facing a similar challenge? No, our inventory is very clean. I think we dropped our inventory by about 20 over percent over last financial year. Uh, we're very clean with our inventory. And, uh, you know, it's, it's about monitoring and managing it as best as you can. And in our business, it's cost and inventory. Because if you have an inventory overhang and you've got to clear it, that's where your margins drop and that's where you lose money. So it's, these are the two very important things we manage carefully.